So I wanted to talk today about what I believe is the number one most important trait when it comes to success in life. And when I say success, I basically mean going after what you want and getting it. And it actually came to me a few years ago when I was watching this interview with Jeff Bezos and his brother and they're getting interviewed. And I remember the interviewer asking Jeff Bezos what he believed the most important quality of a successful entrepreneur is. And it was an interesting answer because he was telling the story behind his childhood and how that was involved. But the answer he gave was self-reliance. Self-reliance. He basically talked about how he and his brother, when they were growing up, they would sometimes spend time on their grandfather's farm and it was completely self-sufficient. They didn't have to go to town. They didn't have to go anywhere in order to uh, survive. They could really subsist on what they had on the farm. So they're completely self-reliant. And he said that any time maybe he would get hurt, for example, he would cut himself on the fence, he wouldn't go to the hospital. It would be way too far to do that. So he would take care of it himself. He would bandage himself up and take care of his own wound. And I think that is an important quality that I've also noticed with people that I know personally, where I've seen them go from literally nothing to building sometimes an incredible business or building an incredible life. It's the ability to rely on oneself. And I believe that this is also what's missing when it comes to a lot of people in my generation. I felt like for myself, I was missing this quality for a while. I had to build this up because a lot of it comes from being able to have and cultivate character and the ability to persevere, persist, and to be resourceful. I think this all plays a part in becoming someone who is self-reliant. And like I said, I think there's a lot of people, especially in my generation, they're very talented, very intelligent, but they lack self-reliance. They lack the character traits in order to, instead of just wanting everything instantly, instead of wanting instant gratification, they, they essentially... Uh, they, they don't have the ability to prolong or to delay gratification to get to the point where they can become self-reliant, right? So I think for me, I definitely had issues with this. I struggle with this where, you know, sometimes, especially when you feel like you can't get bailed out in an instant or when you're living a comfortable life. And I think a lot of us in this day and age are living more comfortable lives than ever before. If you really think about it, right, we have modern technology, we have our smartphones, we have our computers, you know, we have plumbing. I mean, think about it, like a thousand years ago, the world would look completely different. We didn't have the medicine technology that we have today. We would have to be a lot more self-reliant, but the issue with that is you're sacrificing a lot of comfort and conveniences. So of course, I don't want to sacrifice the comforts and conveniences but it's about how do we become self-reliant in today's day and age, right? That's the question is how can we still have these comforts and conveniences and still become self-reliant in today's day and age? Because without self-reliance, you're never truly independent. You're never truly free. You're always depending on someone else in order to solve your problems for you. So I believe that really focusing on developing self-reliance, being resourceful, you know, when your back is against against the wall. It's not even the big things either, right? Definitely includes the big things, but even the smaller things. Like let's say one month you're running out of money, you're running low on money, and you have bills to pay, right? And you maybe get an unexpected ticket in the mail. And you have to figure out, okay, I don't have enough money to cover my bills and pay this ticket. How am I going to navigate through this situation? I'm already in debt. I'm trying to figure this out. How do I navigate through this, right? So if you've ever been in that position, I definitely can relate because I've been in that position as well. And it's about being resourceful. What can you do? What can you do to cover the costs? You know, even without asking for help, right? I think there's certain times where it's important to be able to reach out and ask for help, for sure. I'm not denying that. But what I'm saying is maybe take, take it one step further and ask yourself, how can I be resourceful in order to solve this problem? If you're able to solve these problems with resourcefulness, the smaller problems, then it trains you, it builds the foundation for you to be able to do the same thing with the bigger problems. And honestly, sometimes it's easier to solve the bigger problems 
because it's a bigger deal to you. It's more important to you. You know the payoff is greater. Sometimes with the smaller problems, those are the ones that are more difficult to solve because you're annoyed by them. You don't want, you know, you don't want to take the time to, to go through and solve those problems. But for me, what I've come to realize is it's a matter of attacking the problem, like with your full energy and focus, just getting through it, taking care of it as quickly as possible and being resourceful in the process. That's what I found for me has been most effective. You might have a different process for yourself, but for me, I found that when I really lock in and focus and just say, okay, I'm just going to take care of this. I'm going to do it as quickly as effectively as possible and move on. You know, things like paying your bills or doing your taxes or things like that. That's what I'm talking about. Like the things that aren't so sexy, but those are things that you still have to get done. Right. And these are the smaller problems. And it's about figuring these things out. And once you're able to figure those things out, the, the more minor problems, then I feel like, once again, you build the, the muscle and you build the foundation to really attack the larger problems in your life. And you, as a result, you get higher and higher quality problems in your life. And you know, it's not a matter of getting rid of all your problems. It's about increasing the quality of your problems. So I would rather be thinking about how do I allocate all this wealth that I have, right? That's, I think, a, a higher quality problem than thinking about, or than having to think about how am I going to get out of debt, right? Those are two different types of problems. And I'm not saying that if you're in debt right now that you should feel bad about that. I know how it feels. I've been there before. It's a matter of, once again, just take it one step at a time. Don't get ahead of yourself. Here's the thing is I think a lot of anxiety comes from you feeling like you want to be in a different place. It comes from a sense of lack of of patience, right? Lack of patience, because you feel like you want your problems instantly solved right here, right now. You're not willing to wait and to chip away at it over time. It's something that you feel like, you know, especially with debt. I think a lot of people have this, this thing around debt where they feel like it's going to take forever to get out of this, right? Or figuring out their dating life. I know, you know I've, I've worked with a lot of guys in this area in the past. And a lot of guys feel like, man, I'm never gonna get this figured out. I have to keep going out night after night, get rejected, and never gonna figure this out. But it's a matter of, once again, being consistent, being patient, continuing to take the actions, taking it one step at a time, and just keep going, right? Being patient, cultivating that sense of self-reliance, being resourceful, and I believe that is the catalyst behind success in life. I'll leave it at that. Talk to you later. Take care.